Iron Mike Tyson. The name Mike Tyson is forever inscribed in the history of the world of boxing. This greatest athlete needs no introduction. You can endlessly compliment him as an athlete, but there were events in Mike's life that negatively affected his reputation and career. But perhaps everything is happening as it should be. We all go through lessons that make us better. Tyson who at the age of 20 became the youngest boxer in history to win the heavyweight championship, was sentenced in February 1992 to six years in prison for rape. At the peak of his career, Tyson was an unparalleled phenomenon in the ring with an extraordinary combination of speed, timing, footwork, and power. An important factor, of course, was Iron Mike's threatening personality and his ability to cripple opponents with fear before the fight even began. After the epic loss to Buster Douglas, Tyson's skills began to wane due to the lack of proper preparation, concentration, and dedication. Unfortunately, Iron Mike's boxing ability had only deteriorated further during his three-year stint behind bars. But talent, as they say, you can't drink away and therefore Mike continued to blow the heads of his opponents to the delight of the fans. Let's remember the best knockouts of Mike Tyson after his release from prison. To return, Don King picked the right opponent for Tyson in the person of Peter Hurricane McNeely, from whom Mike would confidently start and remember what the taste of victory was. The duel called He's Back took place on August 18, 1995. In addition to the filled MGM Grand Las Vegas, one and a half million paid broadcasts were bought. The entire boxing world was waiting for this comeback and was looking forward to seeing the old kid dynamite they remembered. Before the fight with Mike Tyson, the Hurricane McNeely was on a splendid streak of 12 wins in a row and was confident that he could stop the Iron Mike hype train. Instead of being cautious as expected, the Hurricane aggressively attacked Tyson right after the bell and tried to intimidate the most notorious of all bullies. Tyson was able to avoid McNeely's aggressive punches and landed an accurate right cross in the 10th second that knocked McNeely down. The Hurricane immediately jumped up as if nothing had happened and the referee allowed him to continue the fight. McNeely again rushed to the attack and the fighters entered into an exchange of blows. The shootout was at close range. Both boxers hit, but Iron Mike hit more accurately and more powerfully. Despite admirable bravery, McNeely's strategy backfired. He behaved dirty in the clinch and was punished. Tyson landed a few slip hooks that left McNeely uncoordinated and cut him down with a hard right uppercut. McNeely immediately got up, but he was stormy. The Hurricanes promoter and his corner man ran into the ring to prevent further damage to Peter. The referee asked them to leave the ring, but they refused and the referee stopped the fight. The fight lasted only 89 seconds, and the judges awarded Tyson the victory by disqualification. This fight became an internal mental success for Iron Mike, and he was ready to conquer the peaks again. He needed this victory to increase his fighting spirit and to strengthen his belief in himself as not just a fighter, but a champion. One fight after that, Mike Tyson had the opportunity to fight for the WBC world title with Britain, Frank Bruno, for whom this was the first defense. Mike had already beaten Bruno seven years ago by TKO in the fifth round. Frank's attempt to take away the belts from Tyson was then unsuccessful, and now the fighters have switched places. Since then, Bruno had fought nine fights and lost only once to Lennox Lewis. Now, he was on a series of four victories in a row, and in the last fight, he took the WBC belt from Oliver McCall by unanimous decision. How was Iron Mike's first title fight since his release from prison? Immediately after the bell, Tyson turned on his aggressor's style. The whole fight, he put pressure, reduced the distance, and fed Frank with his punches. The Briton escaped in the clinch and tried to respond with counterattacks. 
at the end of the first round. Mike shook his opponent a couple of times, but he constantly clinched and reached the bell. The entire second round, Iron Mike hunted for the opponent's head, and it's unclear how it remained on his shoulders after such killer hooks. It all ended in the third round. At the end of the first minute, Mike accelerated an attack, and the Briton could not keep him in the clinch. Tyson unleashed a flurry of powerful punches, and the referee intervened and stopped this brutal beating. Mike Tyson became the WBC heavyweight champion again, and Frank Bruno did not enter the ring again. In September 1996, Iron Mike had the opportunity to unify the titles and take the WBA belt from Bruce Sheldon for the champion, nicknamed the Atlantic City Express. It was his second title defense, and he went 33-3. After the bell, Tyson immediately went on the attack. Sheldon, fleeing from Mike's attacks, tried to keep him at a distance, but when Tyson pressed him to the ropes, Sheldon clinched. In the middle of the round, Tyson broke through a sliding cross. Sheldon collapsed to the canvas, but rose to the count of five. Immediately after the resumption of the fight, an Iron Mike left hook to the head again sent the enemy to the ground. Sheldon got up, but it was stormy, and the referees stopped the fight. Tyson unified the WBC and WBA titles and earned $25 million from this fight. An interesting and sad fact is that immediately after the battle, he was seriously injured, and later Mike's close friend, rapper Tupac Shakur, died. After two losses in a row to Evander Holyfield, that epic earbite, and the loss of his titles, Tyson fought two fights. In the first fight, he knocked out the South African Francois Botha, and the second fight was declared no contest due to the injury of Mike's opponent, which he received after falling from the blow that Tyson inflicted after the bell. Controversial moment, but let's move on. Three months after that, British champion Julius Francis came out against Iron Mike with a record of 21-7. Back then, Tyson had a record of 46-3, where 40 wins were knockouts. We see a huge difference in experience and performance, but the Briton was oversized and at the weigh-in behaved as if Tyson was easy money for him. Tyson immediately began to attack, and immediately after the bell, Francis felt the power of his left hook, but he resisted. Tyson always took the audience with an unbridled aggression in the first seconds of the fight, and against any opponent. Mike pressed the whole round, and in the last minute, the Briton was knocked down twice. First, this right uppercut flew to visit Francis, and after he continued Tyson's jab, he again knocked him down, but the bell saved Francis. The second round began with aggressive pressing from Tyson again, and already in the first seconds after a series of heavy hooks, Francis lay under the ropes. He got up just to lie down again from a left uppercut. The Briton rose again, and everyone already understood that it would not be for long. During the first minute of the second round, he was knocked down three times, and the referee stopped the fight. Another early victory went in the piggy bank of Iron Mike. After several wins in a row, and a loss in the much-anticipated bout against Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson returned to the ring in February 2003 to face North American champion Clifford Etienne, nicknamed the Black Rhino. Etienne began boxing during a 10-year prison sentence for robbery, where he won 30 of the 30 official prison fights. Upon his release, he became a professional boxer and amassed a good record of 24-1-1, where 17 wins were knockouts. The Pyramid Arena in Memphis was completely packed, as it always was when Iron Mike fought. Tyson, according to tradition, rushed to the attack and ETN entered into an exchange of blows with him. Black Rhino got away from the blows well, and after diving, hit a couple of times with short right hooks. The fighters entered the clinch. 
ETN went forward. Mike lost his balance, and together they fell to the floor of the ring. After that, the boxers again began to fire at each other at close range, where Tyson was more accurate. And at the end of the first minute, he delivered an accurate right cross to the jaw. On the count of 10, Clifford Etienne was just getting up, and Mike helped him up. It was a quick and yet another victory for Mike Tyson by knockout, but it was the last of his career. He fought two more fights, but lost both, after which he hung up his gloves. The return of Iron Mike to the ring received the status of Event of the Year. However, after prison, Tyson's style changed significantly. His counter-attacking peekaboo style changed to that of a rusher. The impact force increased and the attack improved, but the endurance and defense decreased significantly. Few could resist this onslaught, but Mike's stamina in the second half of the battle fell significantly, and as a result, he fell to Holyfield and Lewis. Nevertheless, Tyson won all his victories ahead of schedule. After his release from prison, the great champion, whose fights will be reviewed at all times. If you enjoyed this video, please put a like, leave your comments, and press the bell to avoid missing the next one. And if you watch this video without a subscription, sign up for the channel right now. We'll see you in the next video.